I mean, well, I'm just going to come into the wisdom of the question. I think to really realize, and we know about family separation in the immigration context, but all domestic incarceration is still family separation. And I think the first step is to really um, talk about that, that this is family separation, and to, and to just note the trauma both for the individuals incarcerated and their family members, and just continue to really um, document that. I think uh, a colleague of mine in uh, San Jose said that you know injustice happens in empty courtrooms all the time. And I think one thing we get to do a better job of is actually trying to document them. So we're working with some filmmakers to try to actually, first of all, document exactly what that family separation is and the trauma. Because I think once we start doing that, we're going to start changing hearts and minds and coming up with alternatives um, to that. Um, as far as cities, I mean, we. In, our, in San Francisco, we've taken um, a, a chapter from Seattle's book and we started a LEAD program so that when someone is uh, initially arrested, rather than charging them, where they're immediately punched, uh, funneled this to some sort of diversionary program. And I think that's, that's a step in the right direction. I think we have to do it for far more cases. Um, and hopefully we can do it without actually having the arrest to begin with. But um, so San Francisco, I think, is gonna start hopefully becoming a trend center in that direction, but we have a long way to go. But we, you know, I try to you know, go to different cities when I'm asked to speak to try to pick up pieces from other other jurisdictions that we can then bring to San Francisco and also we try to open source some of the things that we do well to other, other cities. And on that art piece, um, I mean, it's, it's really important. I mean, artists such as movies are, to me, despite my sort of flippant response, um, are such an important way for people to understand a system um, and understand the injustice within a system. I think what I would love to see and in social movements around the world, what I haven't seen enough of here in the United States, I think some of us are, so many of us are still in shock, is the vision of where we're going. And so having movies and art and a painting of what society would look like if it wasn't a, a complete punishment in your cage system, right? Um, with my boys, I have twin boys that are seven, when they do something that they're not supposed to do, the question is, we'll go to the person that apologizes and say, what do I, what do, I, what do you need to make you feel better? Um, so it, it's, it's, but it's taking that and, and sort of blowing it up. Um, we're building new institutions. Um, our, we just passed public banking for the first time really to create in, in, the, in California to create a new system of, um, of, of our monetary but banking system. Um, that will invest in local communities. Um, and so those are sort of like in, in the category of art that's sort of like taking the problem and, and solving it. What we also need is, is to paint a completely different picture. Um, so if there are any artists, that's just my plug for all of us to, uh, that are artistic to, to actually put it out there and for us to create spaces where we're doing that. In my understanding is that Larry Krasner, who is who's the district attorney in Philadelphia, he makes the prosecutors when they recommend a sentence talk about what the cost is. So I'm recommending this many years in prison and this is going to be the cost. And I think to actually make clear when you're recommending or advocating for a sense the actual implication of that, and then hopefully people start thinking about, well, the money's going here as opposed to somewhere else like the public defender's office or another um, you know, uh, you know, community empowering organization uh, would be you know, something we have to do to really name what the cost of that incarceration is both, uh, both uh, financially and, and um, psychically. Monica, are there scale issues related to your work? Are there more cases than you can take? Do you have to turn down cases and clients? Yeah, we're turning down work all the time. I mean, we're, we're under-resourced as every other organization is. Um, our work is not, unlike a legal services organization, we're not trying to place as many cases in as numbers, uh, get our numbers as high as possible. There are a number of really fantastic organizations who fill that role. Our, role, our work is really focused on serving a number of clients to understand the intricacies of a problem. Um, we have a consumer bail clinic, understanding how the bail bonds industry works so that we can dismantle it. Um, so our work is really about how do we grow scale uh, to change systems as opposed to numbers. Um, but um, because John is sitting in the front and I've had this conversation with him a lot, 
Um, I think the other thing I will say sort of in, in addition to that is that um, the organizations that are on the front line are being asked to solve a lot of the problems right now. Um, as a civil rights organization, um, there's a lot of expectation and hope put in us and we are grateful for it and we are working around the clock to try to deal with what's coming at us. Um, but to have the creative solutions, to understand what is truly gonna transform this moment, we have to move to abundance. We're in scarcity mode all the time. We're thinking about how do I keep the lights on? How do I um, hire the next person? How do I pay my staff a living wage? How do we deal with vicarious trauma? How do we support our staff and the mental health um, issues that come up by bringing their gifts into the office? Um, we're, you know, we're really focused on that. In that space, it's really hard to imagine and paint and say, hey, how do we create something different? Um, and that requires a scale and level of resources that just isn't yet in our world. How is your work funded by Ireland? Um, we get a number of, uh, a big chunk of our work is individual or law firm support. Um, we get state grants, um, government contracts, and um, foundation support. Um, but it's year to year. Um, and we are, you know, we've had a good, couple of years in terms of strengthening our, our organization and our institution, um, but I just came from a board meeting and I started by saying, let's actually, as we're doing our fundraising, envision a different institution. Ideally, we don't want to exist at some point. I mean, that's the whole point of the civil rights organizations, you don't want to exist. Um, but for this moment, what is needed is for folks to give, whether they're in foundations or individuals or law firms or corporations, um, to give far more than they've been um, comfortable giving in the past. There's a question from the audience. Um, SFPD is working on reforming its um, guidelines regarding use of force and other forms of bias. Um, do you feel the Public Defender's Office should have input into this process? And if so, how could you make that happen? Yeah, I mean, I think we should have input into every aspect of the system, and we, we try to actually do meet with uh, Chief Scott, and he's got a whole uh, monthly kind of meeting with him. And, you know, I think we should certainly, um, you know, work on their general orders on use of force, but also the reality is there also has to be a culture change. Um, we can talk about guidelines all we want, but we really need to start, um, uh, they need to start either hiring people and or working on training so that the, the immediate instinct isn't to use force. I mean, whatever the guideline is, the reality is what's gonna happen out there is gonna happen out there. And I'm interested in less people being abused or, or killed by, by police officers. So um, yes, it is important for us to have their voice there, but it's also important for them to try to facilitate uh, culture change as quickly as possible. I'm gonna ask one more question and then um, look to the audience to see if there are any other questions and you can just um, raise your hand and I'll call on you. Um, but before I turn to the audience, another TV question. Uh, <laughs> if, um, if John Oliver, host of HBO's Last Week Tonight, were to contact you and say that he wanted to collaborate to um, uncover and expose an issue in the civil rights or punishment systems, what would you what would you want to work on with him to cover? What do, what do we need to know about that's currently hidden that his platform would be perfect for um, exposing to a broad audience? And I think it's, um, I don't know that it's one issue. It's, mm -hmm. it's, we have, if you, I got to sit on this stage thanks to Manny um, uh, several months ago with Richard Rostin, who wrote Color of Law, and mm -hmm. talked about segregation um, and the history of segregation and the ongoing impact of the racial wealth gap. I mean, what needs, it, it can't be a one line story. It's got to be the layers and layers and layers upon ways in which we have ensured. Um, that there hasn't been prosperity and growth and opportunity and the ability to live out your dreams in too many communities in our country for a, a number of different reasons. Layered on top of it, the ways in which we extract resources and wealth out of communities today, not just um, the historic piece of it. But I think it's, um, 
it's so hard to pick one thing because I, I really do see it as these like weaved layers of ways in which um, we as a country that holds ourselves up, and I'm you know as a daughter of immigrants, like patriot, but patriot to the core um, in that way, and yet part of that we're not going to emerge from this moment. We're not going to be able to create the vision of where we're going until we just tell the full and complex story. So it might be like a year long. Um, so it's a series. It's, it's not, a series. It's not, it's not, it's not a one way. No, you like, need a sh you're getting a show. I need right. like a two year <laughs> series of different things. And the stories of hope along the way where we're making progress so that people don't tune out. But yeah. <laughs> What does she do? Do you want to expose on Monica's show? That's it. <laughs> series. Well, that, um, there, there's a lot of um, a lot of things we could cover, but I'm going to start with uh, or talk about overcharging because I think that's something that not enough people have a grasp of. I'll tell a little story. I was representing an 18 year old in Richmond, California, and he had been walking through the woods and hit a branch in his hands comes out of the woods and he sees his cousin on one of those scooters. Uh, his cousin's like 13 or so. He's like, what are you doing? You should be in school. And the 13 year old says, well, you're not my, you're not my dad. You can't tell me what, we, what to do. So my client has this, this branch and he says, well, if I was your dad, and he swings back, I, you know, I hit you with this stick. And he wasn't actually, didn't actually swing forward. Unfortunately, on the back swing, he scratched the young kid's cheek. Um, kid starts crying, client runs to the home, sees, sees he's okay. What do they charge him with? Assault with a deadly weapon, okay. strike, carries up to eight years in prison. Okay. Now, in another part of that county, maybe what they do is call both parents and say, hey, you know, there seems to be some issue here, uh, and it ends there. In another part of the county, they may charge as a misdemeanor. Uh, and then hopefully you go to trial and show it was an accident. But in this part of the county, in that they felt comfortable charging, you can imagine African American uh, teenager, they felt comfortable charging him with a felony strike. Um, and I don't think people are aware when we think of like the three strikes law that it's being used in situations like that. But it is being used like that all across California. So I think to you know, just expose that and let people know um, something used to be done. What didn't I ask that I should have? 